Hey everybody, Jason Burmis here with MMA legend John Fitch, and it's already been a hell of a day uh, for the first time ever. I have had one of my videos taken down by YouTube ever in 13 years. Wow. That just never happened before. Uh, I dare speak about the great resistance, but I don't think that was it. I don't even think it was me getting heated. I don't think it was any of the other video clips. I'm almost 100% sure I dared show the New Jersey governor be confronted at that dinner table and uh, told to go F themselves. Rules for you, but not for me. Uh, again, uh, it, me, it must be me. nice to be able to take your family out to a $300, $400, $500 wow. dinner. Cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure you saw that video, right? Uh, yeah, I did see that video. And then whatever, smart, I don't know if it's a smart-ass son or whoever, <laughs> yelling back at him, just take the, take the L. Yeah, go ahead. It's a bad look. You know, it's a bourgeoisie, let them eat cake type of thing. Like, <laughs> just take the L. Well, what's crazy to me, John, is that kid is sitting there with a little smug face, with a designer watch, with a jacket he got out of some catalog, okay? That's a catalog jacket, guys. Let me tell you something right now. That jacket probably cost about $240. He's going to wear it for two months, okay? That's the reality, and he's eating filet mignon. That, that dinner cost more than many people's rent in New Jersey did last month. Okay, and they're not allowed to earn their money. And I am calling, and I am dead serious. I am calling for the Great Resistance December 10th. I've reached out. I'm going to continue to reach out to everybody. You know, so far a lot of deaf ears, but I'm not going to stop. I mean, we got to take over the halls of government. We got to sit in, and if that's going to get me banned on social media or eventually shot with a bean bag, I'm fucking willing to take it. I'm not the toughest dude in the world. I'm not the smartest. I'm not the most organized. But I'm done. I'm done playing fucking pretend. They almost took away my MMA event this weekend. Okay? Uh, luckily, they, they put in more slave restrictions, right? But we had it. You know, I was able to make my debut, John. Which is great. You know, that's what I yeah, mean. Yeah, how'd that go? How'd the uh, debut, your <laughs> MMA play calling so, debut? So, first night comes up. And I'll you, got pull- a, you got a catchphrase yet? Who me? Ah, uh, no, no. I, I plugged the show a few times though. <laughs> you know, they asked. Yeah. We, we got we, Yeah, we got to get. We got to get you in there. Uh, maybe in March we're doing a triple event. I, we would have liked to do more, but you know, again, everything came through in a social event at a bar. Things that aren't allowed a week later, right? Where these guys are talking to me, and they're like, "Well, you know, we'd like you at least uh, interview some fighters, and then maybe just go over the polls, right?" So first couple days after the, the the event comes on, I got I got basically a call um, a day after our show saying yeah. we're gonna do it, but no vendors. Okay, so listen to this, listen to this yeah. shit. Like no booze, no food, masks while sitting down. Okay, that was the rule. Now if you think that's draconian, on top of all that nonsense, water bottles. <laughs> They had free water bottle stations. They made you drink the water in the designated water bottle section. <laughs> like, it's out of control. I'm not going to lie. But kudos to Mike Goodwin, the promoter, for putting it on, doing it all despite that. So, you know, I'm there for the first night of weigh-ins. And, um, you know, I'm doing interviews. And that's going well. And then the second night is the first night of fights, second night of weigh-ins, and like I said, my color commentary. Pulver's supposed to be there. Pulver had pulled out, so they pulled some kid uh, named Eric Shelton, who had been on The Ultimate Fighter, had some uh, pro fights under his belt as the secondary guy. And obviously, you know, I, I, I hadn't jumped in a lot in the beginning, but as the fights went on, I jumped in more and more. All of a sudden, the... Uh, the guy who does the mic is getting text messages saying they like me and that this is the new voice of caged aggression. By the next night with uh, Militich and uh, Jeffrey Wilson of the Conspiracy Farm all together, it was a gravy train with biscuit wheels, a bunch more texts. I got a bunch of pats on the back. They said, cool. you know, we want to work with you. Um, and, and they loved me. So, you know, th- this is a passion of mine. And this is what all of it's about. John, this is why I fucking do these things. It's not just because like lot, it's a lot. It's a lot funner to talk about that than uh, you know, gay frogs and <laughs> <laughs> transhumanist shit. You know, you don't even think about that all day long. I, 
and, and here's the thing. I understand where people might get that impression if they've only seen one or two of my videos and they haven't followed my career for 10 years or if they see a documentary film or if they read what the media has to say about me. You know, there's this box that they want to put people in that talk mm-hmm. about this kind of stuff. Yeah, they want to they want to dumb everybody down into a one word explanation. Listen, I like sitting cage side at some fights there. with some uh with some ring card girls next to me mm-hmm. having a good time whether I'm calling good them or not. For your testosterone. Wow. It's really it, healthy. Yeah, it was really healthy for me, believe it or really not. Healthy. It's super healthy. So, uh honestly and and it's one of those dreams I've been talking about being the poor man's Joe Rogan. For years and years and years. Ryzen, what are you doing? Again, if you're going to put on events and you're putting them on Fight TV, go listen to the Caged Aggression stuff. Me and Fitch will kill it. We can make it happen remotely. Or fly us out to Japan. You know, I might be willing to jump through some hoops. What what is it? You're flying around the country. Do you know if there's more restrictions if you're flying outside the country right now? Dude, it's just from, uh, I don't know about outside of the country, but... I, I was supposed to go December down to Costa Rica, but that, that, that plan changed. It's supposed to be January now. But, um, like, so there's some places you can go. It seems like my friends have a place in Cabo. So they went down and spent a week in Cabo. Uh, my friends visited them from Indiana. So, like, there's, you know, there's some places you can't go to. I, I think uh, Crazy Bob's down in um, Costa Rica. Not Costa Rica, but he's in uh, – um, uh, Man, Puerto Rico. He's in Puerto Rico. I, I mean, I would yeah. assume so, like it- there's places you can go, but like, like I was in uh, Boston. I went to Boston for the weekend to yes. film some stuff, film some technique. The fanatics guys, they do like MMA fanatics and BJJ fanatics and and that stuff. So uh, I'll have like a DVD series or something coming out mm-hmm. uh, for them at some point. It'll be modified takedowns, wrestling takedowns for MMA, <clears throat> but. I went out there and then it was like at the airport, you, you know, you have to buy food if you're going to get a drink. Mm-hmm. And then they track trace you if you buy anything. What? Yes. Well, well, so all right, all right, if right, you buy anything, you have to like, you take a picture of this code, barcode, and then you have to fill out like your name and your phone number. I, see, here's the deal. But it's I'm only not, if you're buying something. And I'm not doing any of it. I'm telling people right the fuck now. If your brown shirt ass shows up to my house well, or calls I, my phone, I I'm- accidentally put the wrong number in. <laughs> well, I'm telling you Lift, now. I forgot. I used my old college number. It <laughs> happens sometimes. I get punched in the head a lot. I'm telling people now, have as much cash on you as you can. Make those times <laughs> kinds of transactions and make those kind of decisions that John Fitch is making. Bitcoin. Too. Oh, we're, well, we'll get into all of Bitcoin. it because, because you know, as much awesome mixed martial arts as we can go over this weekend as well. There's just so much going on in the world, Fitch. I don't think we're gonna have. It is. And I'm fired up again. They took down my only video today. You know, I'm, I'm wow. fucking pissed. Well, I'm gonna play were, most uh, of those videos. Like, yeah. there's a lot going on. There was a lot of fights and stuff going on too this weekend. All right, let's let's. It's been, you know, it's been a busy couple of weeks. <laughs> it really <right>? is. <laughs> and Fitch, did you see? Uh, I, I'm not sure if you checked it out, but I, I don't think we've talked since this. But was yeah, it was last week, right? Um, last week, I, I almost didn't jump in on that um, union of the unwanted. I always do, and you know who was yeah. there? Roger Stone. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. So I, I was, uh, I, I honestly, I skipped like like 20, 30 minutes of it. I went to go get junk food. I was going to fall asleep because I was exhausted because that was the, you were the sixth video I'd actually done that day. And, mm. um, yeah, I went to go watch it to see who was on as the big guest. And I see Roger Stone and I'm like, oh, fuck this. Oh, so I, I ran over, I got in there and I got about 15 minutes in with Roger Stone <laughs> back and forth, which, you know, again, follow your dreams, guys. I had no idea I was ca- talking to Roger Stone uh, last weekend, but I got to. All right, before we get to the fights, let's do the rigmarole. rigmarole. You can find the, the podcast in audio form over at thegruelingtruth.com. Everything John Fitch, from resistance bands to the weight cut Bible, is over at johnfitch.net. And you can support my sorry ass through GoFundMe until they pull us down. And you can support us both on Rockfin. The Ray token might be the story for you and I, uh, you know, outside of just Bitcoin and Ethereum. Ray token mm-hmm. hanging tough above a dollar right now, hitting about nice. an average this week of a buck oh eight. 
and hitting a high, I believe, of a buck eleven. Oh, where's the Bitcoin at right now? Should we check? <laughs> Bitcoin is at eighteen three three five. Is that right this second? I, I saw it hit eighteen. That's, that's on my that's on my ticker on my phone. All right, and then Ethereum was hitting almost six hundred today, which is a, which is another big big move, uh, mm-hmm. especially because the Ray token is. And let's see where it's at right now. Six oh seven at Ethereum, nice, and eighteen three seven eight over at Bitcoin. Mm. Yeah, six oh three. That's nice. <laughs> that's what I'm talking. About. I'll tell you right now. Another couple moves in crypto, and I'm cashing out half and fixing my teeth, folks. It's going to be great. I'm fucking doing it. You know, I already would have done it, except for I had to move across the goddamn country. And um, at least people here are pushing back. And you know what? Before we talk big time. People are upset. Yeah, people are not not having it. And, and, uh, man, like, so, okay, yeah, so I'm traveling around the country. And Mm -hmm. the insanity that some people, the hallucination or whatever they can do to themselves to make them believe whatever is fine. But like there, I, there is these two gentlemen we're talking as I'm getting ready to go through security and the guy's a TSA agent and he's got his mask and his shield thing on. And, uh, the guys were talking about Thanksgiving. He's like, Oh yeah, well, I'm not planning on being around anybody for Thanksgiving anyways. Cause they're talking about the news, some Thanksgiving thing. And he's like, I live with old people and you know, I don't want to put them at risk. And I'm just like, you work at an airport all day long. <laughs> With like the dirtiest, <laughs> grossest possible people f- coming in from all over around the world, like you're in the most like infectious place next to like a hospital, hands down. And you you think the mask and a little shield is going to protect you from like the bombardment of the disease if it's there? That may uh, the, the 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 rationale in their head. Oh well, I have this magic spell, magic, well, John, and he, I'm impenetrable. Here's the next thing I've been telling people. Because no one seems to have an actual rational answer after I say this. Why in the world do you think that lockdowns of any sort or the restriction of anything less than everybody's movement at once for a long period of time could possibly stop a virus that is highly infectious and every time it is tested for in a randomized group, 90 plus percent of those infected are completely asymptomatic. I go, that means every time they tested a college, just like they did in Oneonta before I left, Mm -hmm. and they had a thousand positives, John, that means over 900 of those people, actually it was way more than 90%. I've seen numbers as high as 96% in Ohio prisons. You've seen 98% in the, or actually it was 100% in the homeless population in Boston in the beginning. There's not one study out there, and show it to me if you've got it, where they did The the homeless people still haven't started dying. Uh, John, again. Remember, that was my marker at the very beginning, if we should worry or not. (laughs) Yeah. If the most vulnerable, weakest people (laughs) don't die first. Again, how do lockdowns stop that if 90 plus percent of the people are completely asymptomatic when they have it? You know, I I, I don't want to blow up anybody's spot. But let's just say I may have worked with somebody in it recently <laughs> who uh, went and got tested, ended up come up positive, and then all of a sudden got an unexpected phone call he didn't answer and a message from the health department after the fact. Mm. Um, but again, it, it's just it's, – it's one of those things where the contact tracing is real, the authoritarianism is real. You notice when they talk about a vaccine and vaccinating people, they're not going to test you for the antibodies first, and this is only giving you antibodies. So how does this? No, uh, um, it's going to be because it's going to be it's going to be corporations mm-hmm. are going to force you to get the vaccine to use their services. That's right. That's what they you're, want. You're not going to be able to use Lyft or Uber unless you have you have your vaccine card or whatever. Well, and they don't you... care. They don't care if you had it or if you had antibodies or if you're immune or if you're Superman. Doesn't matter. You're going to have to have your pun- ticket punched, and that's going to be a form of the uh, the social credit system. That's going to be the that's going to be the introduction to it. Like that's level one. <clears throat> you can't be a, you can't be a part of our society unless you submit to this. Have you seen this yet, John? I played it earlier. And it'll, today. it'll it'll create it'll create a class. It'll create a class system. Have you seen this yet? The World Economics A predictions for the world in 2030. Their 2030 agenda for their global reset. Let's play it. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm tired of all these 
Conspiracy theory is coming true. Yeah, well. You will own nothing, and you will be happy. <laughs> Whatever you want will rent, and you'll be delivered by a drone. <laughs> the U.S. won't be the world's leading superpower. A handful of countries China will dominate. Will, mother- <laughs> you won't die waiting for an organ donor. We won't transplant organs. We will print new ones instead. You're going to love this. You will eat much less meat. Bullshit. <laughs> and occasion- Screw you, sucker. An occasional treat, not a staple for good health and the environment. A billion people will be displaced it's by climate change. You'll have to refu- accept refugees integrating into society. Polluters will have to pay their carbon tax. And there will be a global price <clears throat> on carbon. This is a nightmare, people. Yep. Wake up. Oh, by the way, we're preparing to go to Mars. <laughs> I just got stopped right there. I'll <laughs> agree with that one. Bullshit. John, Let's go I to keep... Mars. Listen, man. Let's go to the moon. Let's go to Mars. Bro. It Bro. is our it is our destiny to explore and take chances and build new things and go new places. We are great, and we need to touch the universe with our greatness. We, we do, we need, John. We need bases on the moon. We need amusement parks on the moon. We need Mars to meet our spot. Let's do it. Let's go. John. America. Just like I told you when we were discussing the moon in 2024 – as Imagination Land <laughs> with rockets, they just announced this week, okay, <laughs> that it is Imagination Land that we are going to the moon. We're not going to the moon <laughs> in 2020. They're blaming COVID, by the way. That's the new one. Um, where is it? Moon 2024. Let's go to the news. They don't want to give space. They don't even aliens COVID. What? Is that it? Like I said, COVID and, and restrictions, they're never going to the moon with rocket technology from the 60s. Let's get over it. Let's be adults about it. It's not happening. No, it's not happening, according to NASA. It's a joke. They keep pushing it back again and again and again. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to Mars, but not with rockets, and they're not telling us about it. Like, this is the most dis- – you're not going to own anything. We're going to Mars. We're going to space. <laughs> like, y'all, it's crazy. This is the push for this Great Reset. And this is the pushback. I'm not sure if you've seen any of these yet. Have you seen this uh, wonderful uh, Buffalo protest? Uh, yeah. Told him to get a warrant, which is 100% in his constitutional right. Yes. 100% correct. So the bald guy you don't, that's you don't here. Get to, the, 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 that's there for a reason. The, they don't get to come in and just dictate new laws out of nowhere. They're not a king or queen. There's due process. They've got to get the, get the damn warrant. Get out of my building. So just so everybody understands what happened here, in case you didn't see my video that was pulled earlier today when we played this, the sheriffs came with the health department. These guys, none of which are wearing masks, men and women, take out their phones and start taping the incident and tell them to get out. Now, the bald gentleman that happens to be yelling was one of the people that I met over at the uh, Albany protest I did over the summer before I went across the country. This guy is on fire. I, I need to find out what his name is. I need to get in touch with him. I need to coordinate with him because obviously um, he he is really pressing on this. Now, in the beginning, the sheriffs are going are saying things like, there's a mask ordinance. There's a mandate. And then midway, the, they look at the sheriff and they go, this is it. You have to defend the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. I go, does she have a warrant to be here or not? And he's like, and she doesn't. She starts getting on the phone. And he goes, then you need to get her out of here. So in the middle of this conversation, it turns from the sheriff's turned up with that woman to do something to the, to, to impose force on this business, to intimidate mm-hmm. them, to them going, the that's not. The barrel of a gun. Yeah. They go, that's not your job. And the sheriff's like, you know what? That's not my job. Lady, you got a warrant? Okay, we have to go outside. So let's play this. To, to let people know that you don't have to be a slave, just like in the title. You can yeah. do this today. They work for their money, and they don't want to lose their livelihood. I've lost friends, Call I've lost family home. who've killed themselves. I've seen okay. clients die because they've lost their livelihood. And I'm sorry to hear that. I know you are. <laughs> I'm asking for you to guys have yeah, some compassion for the people that have lost everything. We do have compassion for people who Okay, well, you everything. need to go have compassion out in the parking lot. But That's this right. Is private property. This is, this is private property. This, 
This is private property. Yes, it is. It's private again, property. Say it oh, again. Say okay. it again. Preach. It's private property. They're not wanted it's here. Private so property. Do your jobs. Well, her job is. You well, no, no. Your you job is to remove people that are not wanted here. You have a We're wanted here. Department. They're not. You She's have a hiding her name. I'm not. It's right here. It's my name. It's my name. They're just doing their job. There we go. And there goes the sheriff going, they're just doing their job. And I love it because they don't back down and they go, hey, man, why don't you do your job? And the guy has to think for a second after being a sheriff for like, how many whoops. years. And he's <laughs> oh, like, you yeah, know what? That's right. <laughs> this lady's I'm technically trespassing. Don't Watch. worry about my health. My health is in your concern. You're meant to be wearing a mask. It's a government. Okay, well, then write me up. It's the law. Okay, then, but then, then take me to jail. It's not the law. Then take me to jail. Show me the law. Show me the law. Show me the law. You have to leave. You guys, you guys have to leave. Show me the law. You have to leave. Right now, you're trespassing. There it is. The sheriff has to tell her right there. Right now, you're trespassing. This should be headline news everywhere, but the media is a sad puppetry. Oh, you need a warrant. You're trespassing. We're not trespassing. You're trespassing. It doesn't matter. We have a right to be here. Go get a warrant. Go get a warrant. Go get a warrant. Yes, you do. You're going to sue. You're going to sue. Don't write the law. No, go on your phone outside. Go on your phone outside. Where did you yell at her? Oh, I would like it if you stopped yelling at me. I'd like you to stop killing my children by starvation. <laughs> like this is if this is insanity. Like, I, listen, don't show up to somebody's business to ruin their life illegally and not expect them to yell Push at you. When they... at all. I can't believe you're pushing back at this. <laughs> Like How bizarre. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we can look at the right Why would you be upset? Where are we? Who reported it? Who reported it? Who reported it? Who reported it? You know what? I don't know. Yeah, if it's anonymous, anonymous, right? It's yes, anonymous. It, it can't be anonymous. Complaint. You need to it know your accuser. Okay, you need to know. It cannot okay, be wait, anonymous. You gotta go get a warrant. It cannot. Yeah, you remember that? We used to be able to face our accusers. Now it's anonymous tip lines and brown yep. shirts. And guess what, slave wrangler? You lost today. You don't get the policies. You don't get to violate the Constitution. It does not matter. You don't circumvent or subvert the Constitution. Dude, that dude, that's the bald dude. He's my boy. Don't circumvent or subvert the Constitution, bro. And they leave. Okay, now, for those that don't know, uh, Cuomo has also uh, been confronted. <laughs> Emmy Award winning Cuomo. Oh, what an honor. What an Emmy. Also not making national news. <laughs> I didn't see this. Is that outside Cuomo's house? Yes. Oh. <laughs> so, like, the thing is, I don't necessarily support this at all, mm -hmm. right? Like going out to people in this way, but this is is just just the other side, the 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 the, the whatever is swinging back the other side. So the left did this for four years. They showed up to people's houses. They danced outside, made noise, were ridiculous. They opened the door and invited it back. So this is probably the norm for the next four year, guys. Good good job. Uh, again, it's but the thing is, the left may have said that, but no one was oppressing people and making them go to bed at 10 p.m. and tell them they can't mm. run their business and putting millions of Americans in poverty. All right. Mm. So on top people of that, outraged over the new COVID-19 restrictions are taking their complaints directly to the Erie County executive. Demonstrators held a protest around Mark Polencar's home in North Buffalo today. They say they're sick of the restrictions, accusing the county executive and Governor Cuomo of being tyrants. And I want them to go after the local government. Here's my boy again. This is that same bald dude I was telling you about that was just in that video throwing the sheriffs out. Yo, this is my boy, Blue. This is my guy. This is who you want to be out there, okay? <laughs> this is the guy. He is laughing at you and your inability to make money. He is shutting down your business. He is stealing the food out of your family's mouths. These people need to stop these closures. They didn't work the first time. They won't work this time. Um, it's, it's really greatly affecting people emotionally, mentally, um, economically, and it's not right. 
Ahead of the protest, Polencar said this would not affect the county's resolve to protect the public from COVID-19. It will when another 500 or 1,000 people show up, I promise. Oh, you know how else it's going to do that? I'll tell you how else. It's going to uh, do that because the sheriffs are not going to back you up. Okay, at least four of New York sheriffs say they won't enforce Cuomo's limits on Thanksgiving. That's Fulton County. That's Saratoga County. Yeah, they got they got their own stuff to be doing, man. Yeah, you want to be out there like a cop? You think a cop wants to be out there like busting people and their Thanksgiving? You know, like it's just protesters take to the streets in uh, California to bash Newsom. Huntington Beach, California, man. (laughs) <laughs> that's my favorite that's my favorite place in california right here it has been it has been since i ever have been out here i used to go down there a lot it's like 2000s and stuff tell the tell the folks what it used to be like before covid 1984 john what's, <clears throat> no, a, what's a, i mean they're just they're just a very they're very based you know like blue collar uh even though they're surrounded by like la and a lot of rich areas like you know it's not a cheap place to live but it's it's middle class. It's a working type of town. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of conservatives there. And you know, again, not making it's national it's news. A little bit, it makes it seem a little bit cleaner and safer. There's a hall. Like when you're there, like I noticed when other places I go to, like I would, you know, go to Venice Beach compared to Huntington Beach. Like there's a difference. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, people don't want to hear that, but I know that you retweeted my story from this week about New York City's crime exploding, <laughs> garbage everywhere, people getting shot. One lady cheap. robbed an <laughs> 85-year-old man for $7. I mean, like, what, what is wrong with people? What is wrong with people? And um, if you have Well, seen- they've, they've painted – so they painted people as, you know, certain people as enemies or bad people. So it's like it's justifiable. Because you're you're killing a monster, you're hurting a monster, you're doing something to a monster, so it's a justifiable thing. So it happens when you when you paint somebody with a slur, you reduce them to a name. Oh, dude, <clears throat> again, uh, it, it it's ridiculous. It, the people on your block are your neighbors, your friends, and your family. And if you still think that this is somehow about a virus, Pennsylvania suspends alcohol sales at bars and restaurants for Wednesday evening and early Thursday with a stay-at-home advisory for all Pennsylvanians because they don't want you to misbehave around Thanksgiving. Now you can't even get alcohol the night before. They're banning it in the state, John. Think how you can't does that get alcohol the night before Thanksgiving? Did I just stutter? They fucking oh did it today. <clears throat> what is going on? <laughs> That's a statewide mandate, bro. That's a state why? That doesn't make any sense. Why? Okay, so everybody's hurting, suffering. Uh, let's just let's prevent everybody from having fun. Yes, it's it's that next subconscious level that they own you, and you're gonna bow down, bend the fuck over, and take it. And I'm done. I mean, how does that make sense that you want to take your family out to eat under these crazy restrictions the night before Thanksgiving, which a lot of people do, by the way. Which no, that's what I, I have, uh, you know, I have split custody with my children. So I'm going to have Thanksgiving dinner uh, Wednesday night. We're going to take them out to eat. And that's my that's my Thanksgiving with them. So that's that's what I'll be doing. And yeah, no wine at dinner for you. they go with their mother tomorrow, you know, the day after around noon. So, <laughs> so yeah, again, no wine for you. you. You don't get to be an adult. They're going to make adult decisions for you. Um, I'll bring my uh, – I'll bring my uh, – my, my, Coffee thermos. <laughs> this shit is just, it's fucking right in your face, guys. You know, I, it, it is right in. Like slowly, in, you slowly take away everybody's rights and then you have none left. Oh, dude. Oh. All right, fight. The, the news is tightening on the internet, too. The, uh, the, uh, the E girls aren't even safe. Oh, why? What's going on with them? That, uh, that Daphne, whatever, chick. I don't know about her. She did. She did a uh, like a uh, a video on her page. She's a really popular girl. She's never had a strike or a warning or anything. Uh-huh. No takedowns, nothing. And she did a uh, um <clears throat> like a like a raunchy dance video. You know, very sexualized. But it was it's nothing compared to or equal to like the uh, the WAP video. Okay. 
right? So, I, I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen it, I guess, but. <laughs> well, I hadn't seen it either, but like I saw like people talking about this thing getting taken down. Or okay. I mean, I'm more concerned. Because I, I don't pay attention to it. It was just in like in my, my feed. Your feed? Today, and I, but like it's, it's an example of like they always say, oh, the conservatives are, they have conspiracy theory blah, 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 about getting censored. It's No, it's like it's more than that. It's <laughs> everyone. It's happening to everybody on all the sides. Like you got to pay attention. So this e-girl never had a strike, never done anything wrong. She just does this dancing sexualized video. And they, they, they one strike, they canceled her whole, whole, whole channel. Oh, oh, they took the whole channel. Whole See, panel. Oh. Like, no warning, no explanation, just she's done. I feel like it's about but to happen like, to me. But, like, the video is on par with the WAP video, but, like, that one was put on their homepage. It was promoted. It was, like, put out there, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's the difference? And it's – it's they don't want any one single person to have that much, like, power or freedom. Like, that's a – she's a – she was – whatever you want to say about her is an individual entity. She was. She didn't have anybody controlling her. She didn't have a contract with anybody who was like, "You got to clear things with the publicist, or you got to do these things." Right? She could just do her own stuff. So, like, that's a lot of what this censorship is: is if you're not beholden to somebody, like who says, "No, you can't say that." You know, you don't have anybody guiding you. Like, I think that is where they're trying to attack people. They're trying to attack you because they don't want you to be able to earn money. And they want to attack you because they don't want you to, to to influence people. They want to have narrative control. And as they tighten down on the internet, they're going to get more and more narrative control because as a creator, if you don't fall into line with them, they're going to they're going to make it really hard for you to do shit. Did uh, everyone just listen to John Fitch there? Rockfin.com slash Jason Burmis. Rockfin.com slash Fitch. Fitch. <clears throat> Here's the deal. He's not wrong. I got my first video taken down today. Did you know this, John? Five days ago, YouTube changed their terms of service so they can monetize your videos even if they've demonetized you and not pay you a cent. <laughs> so so I was reading that today so when I if, saw... what if you don't monetize them? What if they're... Doesn't just, matter. Uh, it says they can monetize any content on YouTube even if you're not part of the po- uh, partners program. So it doesn't matter anymore. You can you could be somebody who's voluntarily not monetized your channel and then they can monetize it, or you could be somebody they demonetized and monetize it and just take all your money now. That's a fair playing I field. Think, yeah, I've got to. Uh, <laughs> so I think I'm mostly going to use YouTube for un un unlisted uh, stuff because uh-huh. I have video courses that I'll put up on Gumroad. Yep, I'll use it. I'll use it for that. <laughs> you know, I won't add share them because people are already paying to, for the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I think that's what I'm going to have to use it for, and then. Just put more and more stuff up on Rockfin, and this well, is just, it's just luck, luckily, support, luckily, fuckery. my I don't want to support fuckery. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm beyond put an end to fuckery. No more fuckery, everybody. Let me write. Let me read it. I want to read it verbatim for people. Hey, let, let's. That should be. We should create a, a public a, a political party called John Fuckery. The Great Resistance, bro. Hashtag the Great Resistance. This is it. The Great Resistance to all of it. Just fucking no. Just say no, man. No, there is no new normal. Again, I was around between the two nights about 1,500 people. Nobody's dying. There are no outbreaks. There's not mass hospitalizations. We could have had food. We could have had alcohol. We could have had fucking two to three times as many people in attendance. So now is the time to push back. Changes to YouTube's terms of service. Okay. First of all, it has this really weird thing in the top, which I was surprised to read. You ready for this? Facial recognition restrictions. The terms of service already state that you cannot collect any information that might identify a person without their permission. While this has always included facial recognition information, the Oh, new- you know what they're going to use that for? I just don't even understand how that's a thing. So wait, you, know how- how they're gonna, you know what they're going to use that for? No, I don't. We, the, so that... If you're recording Antifa or somebody in an event oh. and, you get their, and you get their face, they can put a complaint up or whatever. And then it takes, oh, you're doxing me because you showed my face when I was beating an old lady with a skateboard at this smash the fash rally. Jesus. That's oh. what that sounds like to me, right? You have that permission. You can't expose somebody as – because like what does uh, – what did all those guys on 4chan do? Mm-hmm. Like finding people when remember all that was happening in 2016 with the Berkeley riots and shit, they were like a weaponized autists were 
putting all these picture conglomerations together and they were finding who these people were, you know, even though they had their mask on. So like, I think they're saying that that if they if that happens, they're going to take it down. It's a violation. So basically, just trying to take down anything that might be news footage of masses of people, and only one person has to say, "Hey, there I it's am," a, and they didn't blur me. It's a it's an anti whistleblower anti whistleblower law or restriction. So here it is, right here. YouTube, like you can't you can't put up uh, farm animal videos without the. Written consent of the farmer, <laughs> or or the pig, because you know what? In the future, yeah. they want you to eat l- much less meat. You know that, that pig has rights. God damn it, John! Mm, pigs, lives. <laughs> pigs' lives matter. Yeah, exactly. But we're we're talking about actually pigs and not some kind of like a rip on police. YouTube's right to monetize. Check this out. YouTube has the right to monetize all content on the platform, and ads may appear on videos. From channels not in the YouTube partner program. So there it is, plain as can be. Everything on there they can make money on now. So I wouldn't be surprised, folks, if you start seeing ads on my videos again while they take a non lubed up fist that has been dipped in glue and then smashed in glass. Not lubed up. It's like it's like at the uh the kickboxer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wraps and Glass. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Dipped in glass and fisted in there. Um, what a great movie. When, where are they going to remake that? I think that's overdue for a remake. I realize there's no theater. With all women fighters. Oh, dude. You know that's what it's going to be. <laughs> you, you know, you just... actually, you know what? You know what? I would actually really like that. Do that. But like, it's like uh, <laughs> you cast with like uh, Misha Tate. And Rhonda and Gina. Uh, Everybody hates Gina Carano right now. Gina they tried Ca- to cancel like, her. And, and like, yeah, and like all, yeah, like uh, uh, Cyborg. She can be like Tung Pao. Oh, she'd be the perfect. <laughs> or even the Amanda Nunes or something. Like, yeah, cast them. That would be that would be fun. I would I, watch that one. I'll tell you what. With that. I don't hate it, especially if you go raunchy R-rated cut or no no rated cut Cinemax <laughs> Cinemax style for the for the video release. Not the initial run. You can make a PG thirteen, but you do two cuts. And then you can get like the really hardcore one where I mean Tate's already done some nudes. Um, in uh, and not only Sports Illustrated but beyond. I'm just saying we're trying to make it marketable. Jason Burmis, complete misogynist. I, I'm just, I'm just saying. You know, I mean, how? Yeah, come on, ladies, you're not looking at Van Dam's ribs or a uh, six pack. Give me a break. Of course you are. In fact, you know what? I'll never forget it. I'm so glad that I brought that up. I was as a kid. It was uh, one of those Van Dam movies where he was like saving the village. You know, he'd just come into town and he was the outsider and he was saving some woman who was a single mom or whatever. Mm. And me and my buddy were probably like, I don't know, simp superhero. Yeah, like thirteen, fourteen years old or whatever. We're sitting there, we're watching it, and his stepmother is sitting there watching it. And the sex scene comes on. It's R rated. You know, this is it. This is the boob scene. So, like, you know, there's a little bit of discomfort between me and Matt because, you know, we're not used to seeing this with uh, with her in the room. And she looks over at us and she's like, what, you don't think I want to do Van Damme right now? <laughs> and, and, she, and me and Aunt Matt just kind of looked at yeah, each other yeah. and just rolled with the man. It's like, well, you know what? There are two sides to a story right there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. 40 minutes in, we didn't talk about some of the awesome MMA. Um, There's that, a lot of good ones. A lot of good ones. You catch Bellator? Uh, yeah, I did a, I did a uh, epic live stream with uh, uh, Robin Black. Really? That's fucking yeah. awesome. So we, we, did like, we did like three and a half hours. No shit. Did he contact you for, guy, for that, or did you get him to come on John Fitch Knows Yeah, he, he reached out. He was doing a thing. Uh, it was like with promoted a little bit with through Bellator, so yeah, it was cool. We watched uh, the prelims. I had to go before the main event, but then I got to see you know the highlights uh-huh. of that and the, the submission. That was pretty crazy. Man, I wish you'd see. I mean, don't get me wrong. The Jason Jackson, Benson Henderson. I mean, Jason Jackson just looked really good. It sucks for Benson. He had, he didn't even really have a full camp taking that fight. Um, I didn't catch a lot of those fights, but I did catch McKee. Look so good, so quick, mm. man. I mean, we discussed that. Last week we were talking about you know how how badass he was. Tell us about the live stream. Where can people see that? I, I'm interested in checking it out. Uh, I think Robin maybe Robin Black's YouTube channel. I'm okay, not sure. It's, it, it was it was a good one. Um, man, there was there was a, a guy on the undercard that was uh, really impressive. I can't remember his name right now, but he uh, 
don't know if he was a Canadian, was fighting over in KSW or something like that. Okay. I can't remember who his name was. But I still haven't seen the uh, the prelims on that because again, I was uh, I was out uh, interviewing the fighters for the Cage Digression show on Thursday, but I did get I did catch the two last ones in the co- co-main and main UFC. Dude, I don't know if you caught the early prelims on that, but the early prelims before the prelims that were also pretty good were over the top, man. The early prelims, I think there's three fights on the card. They are all bangers. Um, on the main card, obviously, uh, Perry and uh, who, who was he fighting? The Dirty Bird. Um, fuck. Uh, mean? Tim Means? Yeah, Tim Means. That was a, that was a back and forth brawl. Uh, mm-hmm. Shogun. But was that fight over before it started? What do you mean? Was uh, uh he was he didn't make weight. He seemed kind of broken. Like he's just you know he almost like knocked even through the, out even the fight. He looked like he was just standing there with his chin up. Like, <laughs> well, maybe I'll hit you and knock you out, or maybe you hit me and knock me out. I don't really care. Well, they had that rock'em sock'em robot moment in the second round where they literally just stood there in exchange for about thirty five seconds, which was you know, uh, uh, you know, again, if you're a fan, uh, I mean, I thought it was pretty exciting. Look, I don't want to. I don't want to endorse Mike Perry as like some kind of great guy. We played the video of him knocking the old man out. I have I have my issues with that. But when the next big UFC fight they're promoting is Conor McRapist, I <laughs> I almost give that a pass. I mean that's the new that's the next thing is like I, hey the, the I, I see people like hyped and pumped. I'm like awesome another violent rape payday. Great go Disney. You know <laughs> like I not my thing my, not my thing go Maya. I thought I thought she surprised me against Shevchenko. Uh, Shevchenko obviously won the fight, but what were your thoughts on that one? Uh, I didn't see much of the Shevchenko fight. Oh man, I mean, yeah. I was Maya looked pretty good. It went all five rounds. You know, it was it, it's it's her least dominant performance. And I'll tell you what, in the first two rounds, I thought there might have been problems, especially because you know you would have think that Shevchenko would want to uh, keep that on the feet, but Maya striking's pretty decent. She caught her a couple times, um, but she had her on the ground a lot. And not mm. so much, I mean, don't get me wrong, the positions weren't bad, but she wasn't really getting off. You know, a lot of it was getting stifled. Uh, at the same time, Maya wasn't able to throw up the kind of submissions you would have su- uh, expected. I don't know, it was, it was a different kind of fight, man. It was one of those, almost one of those like Randy Couture grinder fights. They're up against mm. the cage a lot. There, you know, there, there's just limited Keep moments, of, limited moments of striking in the middle of the cage, on the ground. You know, not heavy. Don't get me wrong, Couture had his finishes with that heavy ground and pound, but mm-hmm. you know exactly what I mean. You know, you know, like here and there, uh, effective things that you like to do on the ground. You know, hold a person down, get off when you can. Don't, don't get into a submission. It was an interesting fight, just because again. I, I didn't realize anybody could be at the level Shevchenko's at, and I think Maya's close. You know, so uh, she might be able to run it back in a couple. And then, of course, you had um, Figueroa, who finished him quick. <laughs> he just just looked a monster at that way. Dude, he looks nice. super dominant <laughs> at that way. He really does. And, um, you know, I, I don't even know what else to say about it. I think that that guy could be the champ there for a while. The problem is how many pay-per-views is he selling? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, And they don't, they're not going to push him because he, he's so dominant. He's going to be a guy who could be making a lot of money. And like they're not gonna they're not gonna put him out there and in, in front. They're not gonna put him on loaded cards. Mm-hmm. You know they'll do they'll do him like they did uh, Mighty Mouse. This is one of those cards though that I gotta say, even though maybe on paper it wasn't as loaded. I'm sure, you have the two uh, championships, but mm-hmm. let's be honest. You know those are for the hardcores mostly. Uh, you know they are. You know the 135 class. When have they ever pushed the 125 or 135 male class? It's mm. it's it's never happened. And when have they really ever pushed a woman fighter the way they pushed Ronda? N- none of them. You know, it, I feel like unless no, they had to. They with Ronda, they had to push her. They had to make her huge because they had to legitimize the entire idea of women's MMA. I mean, that's a they, that's a they good had way to, to do that at. because it was always going to be a little iffy. Oh, can you, you know, whatever. Is it possible for girls to draw or blah, 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 blah. Like they had to sell the first one big time. So they, they shoved her down everybody's throat, made sure she was winning, gave her all the promotion that anybody could ask for. 
and and it set the standard that everybody just accepted everybody else at that point. Now, do you think because that was uh, at the time period, if people don't remember, that the UFC had bought Strike Force, <laughs> but they hadn't fully absorbed it yet. So there was mm-hmm. like that eighteen month period where there were still Strike Force shows, just like when the WEC became part well, of uh, the UFC when they brought in the lighter you know, when guys. Dinged by the uh, FCC. I mean, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, not only do you get those fighters and absorb it, but the one thing that Strike Force had that the UFC certainly didn't was a women's division. And mm-hmm. even prior to Ronda, Gina Carano, again because of her looks, uh, had been, you know, especially for the Strike Force promotion, pretty profitable. You know, they had Cyborg, mm-hmm. and Cyborg put it on her. Yeah, but then, yeah, but then that's what happened is before before the the acquisition before, you know, she shouldn't have fought Cyborg. She should have <laughs> held out, and she would have been the Ronda. Very positive. You know, they, I mean, they would have pushed her, but they they didn't want they didn't want cyborg. They didn't want to use cyborg. Yeah, well, well, that's my point. Is like what they didn't do in the UFC when they absorbed Strike Force and not only absorbed them but said, okay, we're we're dismantling it and they're going to become a part of it. Is they didn't have a tournament. They just gave the UFC belt to Ronda where she mm-hmm. held it in Strike Force. There was no tournament. Um, they they basically and that was the only. <laughs> Place they did it in, you know what I'm saying? It's not like they let the other Strike Force fighters keep their belts. No one, no one ever. They've never given anybody a belt, <laughs> ever. Right? Like that was. Like, I mean, that was all. That was a big production. It was all a big PR stunt that worked amazing. They did great. They it was a marketing genius that that pushed that through, and everybody swallowed it whole and loved it. Can't disagree, great job. Fitch. <laughs> John Fitch. He may be more cynical than Jason Burmis when it comes to MMA, folks. That's absolutely true. You think I'm the conspiracy theorist? Maybe you haven't checked out John Fitch Knows Nothing. I do want to remind people that if you didn't check out uh, the fights this weekend over at CagedAggression.tv and you want to check those fights out, here they are right here. 35 bucks, you get both nights of fights. That's 19 fights. It was going to be 20 fights. Uh, there was one that didn't make it. It's awesome. You get to hear my loud mouth call my first fights. And you get to hear me yoke it up with Pat Militic the next, uh, the second night, which I had an amazing time uh, doing. I don't know if there's even a UFC fight night next week. Uh, let's look at Bellator. Let's see what Bellator's got. I'm not sure either. They might have a, maybe a European fight card. It's tough to tell because they don't advertise it at all. Yeah, no. They got nothing until December 10th. Are we going to be talking about Turkey the next fucking three weeks, man? <laughs> man, maybe. And that's, I mean, that's bad. Obviously, I'm sure bad. there's going to be plenty going on. You would think that, but dude, look. <laughs> Bellator. I mean, not in MMA. Yeah, like, exactly. With everything else. <laughs> we've got, we've got what? Two weeks until, or how many days until uh, November or December 14th? Um, December 14th. Because that's the... Uh, the whatever the electoral college votes. That's the final. Oh, is that supposed date. to be? Oh, I, I didn't know that. Oh, that's I think that's what that is. Is December? That was like the last day that. That's Gore three weeks had, from today, it? man. I think yeah, right. Three weeks. Yeah, three about, weeks. About three we'll weeks. Have a finalized decision on uh, El Presidente. All right, so we do have a card. When is this? Five days from now. Okay, so next. Mm. So so this weekend we got. Let's go. Is that with Bellator. It. No, no UFC, and it's actually. It's Curtis Blades versus Derek Lewis. Um, where's the rest of the card, man? Oh, they don't want to tell me because it's UFC Fight Pass in the United States and they want me to go to the shitty ESPN site. <laughs> like, man. Oh, my God. Yeah, dude. I, it's ridiculous. Come on, man. I know, man. All right, so let's go to events. And there you go. Blades versus uh, Lewis. I like Lewis in that fight. I thought he looked amazing in his last fight. I think that... Curtis Blades obviously needs that win, but it's going to be tough to get. Hermanson versus Holland. I like Holland's energy trying to be on the come up, but no, I think Hermanson handles him. I think that's too high level of combat. Uh, I don't know who Junior Dos Santos. Yeah, Hermanson, he's tough. Who is Junior Dos Santos fighting here? And why don't they Some have their names there? Monster. Debo's. This is Debo's baby. <laughs> So like, it's JDS. He's all neck. He's all neck. Look, it's like you don't even see his shoulders yet. It's Yo, all I like, like those traps. traps. That's that trap, trap city. Zilla. Holy Jesus! <laughs> I'm trying to choke this guy. Oh, um, what's going on? Oh, I like this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. These are main event cards. I'm sorry. These are ones that are going throughout the week. So let's go to the Blades versus Lewis. Oh, okay. 
Okay, that makes more sense. That's not, like, yeah, that was the one card. I was like shaping up. Like, Ooh, <laughs> a fun night. <laughs> like I was going through it. I'm like, man, like, these nope, first four, they're nope. all right. <laughs> all right, here we go. Anthony Smith versus Devin Clark. I mean, they're giving Anthony Smith an unranked guy. Good for Devin Clark for stepping in and wanting that. And I guess, you know what? I don't know if I, I, I hate that. Anthony Smith basically got that brut- brutal beating. Brutal beating last time. From out. from Glover. And no, he got knocked out again. There's another loss. In oh, there, and not sure. again from then? No, um, so he's he's had two sav- savage beatings, and now he's going to risk it again. And I, I Again, I don't hate maybe you're, <laughs> It's just a make it or break it fight. Like, you lose, you're done. Yeah, he you're got retiring. it. was uh, Who was it? Alexander uh, Rocky beat him in a, in a decision after Glover got that brutal fifth round TKO that could have been a TKO in the third. So, all right, I, all right. I like Anthony Smith as a fighter. I don't think he's just taking a gimme, but maybe he wants to get back on track. I honestly would like to see the UFC do that a little more when they got a top level guy and especially losing two in a row. You know what I'm saying? In fact, we had a UFC guy on the main card. Um, on Friday night, Zach Otto, who was four and four in the UFC, and it wasn't like he slid four; he just traded wins and losses mm-hmm. in every UFC fight. So, you know, what do you tell a fighter like that, man? That makes it to that mountain of you know the Bellator promotion or the UFC promotion. Maybe they win their first one, lose their second one, win their third one, lose their fourth one. They're two and two or something. What what's your what do you suggest? I mean. Just looking at the record, it's hard to know what's wrong. So, like, you're going to know if you're going through four fights with somebody and you're watching a training camp and you're seeing what's going on. You're going to understand why they're losing one and winning one. Mm-hmm. Like, it's probably because they're they're not doing everything they could be doing and it's it's they're they're too close to that line of, you know, they're leaving it at 50-50. They need, they need to step it up. Now, do yeah, they? That's have- usually, usually the, yeah, it's usually the answer, do more. But, I mean, it's it's like do more of what, though? It's like... Uh, it could be strategy. Maybe we're moving backwards. You got to re- recondition them to move forwards. Maybe um, they're chinny and they need to change their fight game up the first round. Maybe the strategies suck. You know, some guys just go out there and they just they just throw hands. They don't really have a plan at all. And how much of that is mental, brother? Like, like is it so? I mean, I mean- fighting is all mental. So, like, if you don't the preparation, you know, you have to mentally condition yourself to be able to fight a certain way too. Like you have to mentally condition yourself to be able to do things. So like everything is a process of, of getting your mind in order and in your body to, to, to follow suit. Oh, wise words from John Fitch, everybody. Um, geez, Josh Parisian versus Parker Porter. I've seen him in the cage, but I can't remember if I think these, these, both these guys might be coming off a loss as big heavyweights. Yeah. Well, what do you think about Jones? He's showing off pictures of him and, you know. Yeah, horse meat. Well, you know what? I talked to to, to, uh, I talked to Militich about it on Caged Aggression. I go, well, what do you think, man? I go, you look at John's last two performances at light heavyweight, and you have Tiago Santos. Some argued he lost that fight. I thought he won it, but barely. I go, but then you got Dominic Reyes. You know, Dominic Reyes, in my opinion, beat him 3-2, even though the judges didn't see it that way. And then Ray, Reyes gets chin-lined by Jan. So do you have John fight a top-five guy, whether that's a Rosen strike or a Nganyu or somebody that's going to sell tickets? Or do you give him the shot for Stipe, maybe, because, maybe not only because he deserves it or he doesn't, but Stipe deserves the payday, right? There's not a bigger payday for Stipe other than John Jones, is there? True. Yeah, no. No. So... You know, he, you know, Pat kind of agreed with me with that point. He goes, well, you know, he hasn't looked great. And I but think again, he's... he could fight like three turds in a row. I mean, I mean, that's, and that's the other thing. Payday. Well, all right. That's the other thing for John Jones in the heavyweight division. You give him a JDS, that's a gimme fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm no, no, not pissing on Junior Dos Santos. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that's an older guy. But after you get out of that top five, right? After you get out of the Derek mm-hmm. Lewis, you get out of Daniel Cormier if he still wants to fight. Rosen strike, maybe Overeem, right? Who is it? It's anybody at any given Sunday. Arlovsky. Ar- Arlovsky looked good in his last Arlovsky fight. Jones, he won again. Yeah, he, he, he kept his chin up. But again, Arlovsky's yeah. one of those now top 10 to 20 heavyweights in that division. I think he's got a shot at anybody, you know, 5 to 10. I don't know that he has a shot at anybody one to four, you know? I, I 
the heavyweight division to me is the one where it's so lopsided, where there's a few guys in there that like seem like they can do it, but anybody in that top 15 that starts getting one, two, three wins together could be that guy in the top five that could overtake the division, right? I mean, and Stipe, he's been the most dominant heavyweight of my entire life in uh, in the UFC. There's really been no one, whether it be Kane. Kane would probably be the second most, right? Um, you know, guys like Lesnar were in and out. Uh, Frank Mir were in and out. It, it, you know, Junior Dos Santos had, had that beef with Kane, so him and Kane really never... You know, I'd say Kane was more dominant because of those two fucking piss poundings and Junior just catching them in the first round of that first fight. Mm -hmm. Remember that? That was the first ever Fox fight. First one, he just kind of got caught behind the ear and then... It wasn't much of a fight. Yeah, I mean... It wasn't much of a fight at all. No, no. And then the second fight... Beat down on him the next next time. All right, we've been doing it uh, for about an hour, guys. John Fitch, you can find him over at johnfitch.net. Why don't you tell people what you're selling over there? Yeah, check out, uh, you know, I got my two books, Failing Upward Death by Ego. I share a lot of old journals and stuff. I got more books coming on that. Uh, I have uh, the Wake Up Bible, get you to lean out. Even if you're not cutting weight, you can, you can get lean, get jacked. I've got uh, resistance band courses up on Gumroad. I have uh, a, a hand fighting seminar with lessons uh, up on Gumroad. I got a bunch more stuff coming up. Um, all the lessons and techniques are going up on uh, Rockfin, so you can actually get that stuff cheaper if you just subscribe to Rockfin. Yeah, that's about it. And then you know, uh, I'm available for seminars. I travel, so you can uh, you can uh, email Leah at johnfish.net. And uh, book, book me coming out, teach. Book John Fitch, and he will smash your way to victory. TheGruelingTruth.com is where you can find us on the audio game after the fact. And again, Rockfin, Rockfin, Rockfin. I will be there live and exclusive tomorrow, as I am Monday through Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern every single day. There's the GoFundMe. We will see you next week, talking some fights and a lot more. Thank you all.